Good evening and welcome everyone to this evening for our BYU Pathway devotional. We're grateful that you're taking the time to be with us and we hope that you find this hour we spend together both uh, academically and spiritually uplifting and educational. We would like to first of all just introduce a few individuals. My name is Kevin Lithgow. I am an Area 70 in the North America Southwest area and I will be conducting this uh, meeting this evening. We have with us this evening President Clark Gilbert, who is the president of the BYU Pathway Worldwide, uh, who we'll be hearing from later. We also have Elder John Smith in Area 70 and the Assistant Vice President of ASU, who will be joining us as well for some remarks later on. Others who will be assisting with our presentation this evening will be Brother Mike Corden, who's a North America Southwest Area Manager for BYU Pathway, as well as John Wilson, who's a BYU Pathway Domestic Director. So once again, thank you everyone for being here with us. Um, we're going to begin this evening with an, an invocation from Sister Luana Mills, the Welfare Specialist uh, Reliance or Self-Reliance Manager. Our dear and kind Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this opportunity to gather this evening and to learn more about the wonderful plans that Thou has for Thy children to be able to progress and to become more self-reliant. We're grateful for the technology that allows us to gather together. We ask that Thy blessing will be upon us and that our hearts and minds will be open to the promptings that we may receive for ourselves and for those we love and care for and minister to. We pray that the technology will work smoothly and that thy blessing will be upon those who will present and teach us this evening. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, for our prophet and for his guiding voice through these uncertain times. We pray, Heavenly Father, that thou will continue to bless those that are working so hard to help us to overcome the effects of illness and sickness at this time. We are again grateful for our many blessings and pray that thy spirit will attend us. And we say these things most humbly and in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, brothers and sisters, as we um, begin this broadcast, we would really invite you to answer a poll question just for our presentation, our uh, presenters to have a better idea of uh, the makeup of the audience uh, who's attending. So, um, Seth, would you mind, there we go. If you would mind just taking a minute, we'll give you 30 seconds to a minute to answer this poll question. If you are one of these two categories, we would invite you to submit that so that we'll have a better idea of the makeup of the audience this evening. Now, our first presenter this evening will be President Clark Gilbert, who is the president of the BYU Pathway Worldwide. Um, BYU Pathway Worldwide um, is designed to, act to um, bring higher education wherever in the world that the church is organized. And it serves over 45,000 students throughout the world, and it's organized in over 150 countries. So it's very expansive. Uh, president Gilbert served previously as the president of BYU-Idaho. He was the 16th president of BYU-Idaho. He has also um, worked as the CEO of Desert News Publishing Company and Digital Media. He taught as a professor of entrepreneurial management at the Harvard Business School. Um, he graduated from BYU with a bachelor's degree in international relations, by which he um, earned a master's degree in Eastern Asian studies from Stanford University, and a doctorate degree in business administration from the Harvard Business School. Um, his church services included serving as a counselor in the stake presidency, as well as serving as bishop. He was served as a young men's president, a gospel doctrine teacher, as a scout master, and his current assignment is serving as an Area 70 in, in the Utah area. 
He is married to Christine and they're the parents of eight children. So it's a wonderful family. We'll go ahead and turn the time over to President Gilbert uh, for his presentation. And uh, thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you, Elder Lithgow. And it's so great to be with you tonight. I love the uh, Arizona area of the church. I grew up very close to where Elder Lithgow lives. And I've been a friend of Elder Schmidt's for a long time. And so we're just delighted to be with you tonight. And I think we'll have a wonderful discussion about the importance of education and about opportunities that are available to you at this time. Maybe just to get us started, if you could go down to the chat feature uh, at the bottom of your screen, uh, click in there and just tell me where, what town you live in. Um, and let's just get a sense for where people are coming from. Gilbert, Mesa, Peoria, Queen Creek, Scottsdale, uh, lots of Gilberts, Sholo, Flagstaff, Ahwatukee, uh, Surprise, Chandler, Glendale. Wow, I feel like I'm on a, on a tour of my high school sports events all over again. This is great. Sun City, uh, Deer Valley, Tucson, Litchfield Park, Queen Creek. Well, what a treat. Peoria. Um, I grew up in the Phoenix, Scottsdale area, and uh, my all of my family still lives there. And Arizona is still uh, near and dear to my heart. We joked uh, at the beginning of this, though, that I tried to come home in, in Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter times, and the weather's always nice and cool and just right. Um, uh, I'd like to start our discussion out tonight. Um, and uh, Brother Corden, if you could pull up uh, the slide, um, I want to read you a statement from Elder Uchtdorf about the importance of education in the church. And I'd like you to reflect on this for a minute, and I'm going to ask you another question. Right. Elder Uchtdorf says, for members of the church, education is not merely a good idea, it is a commandment. Now, I want you to think about that for a second, because if it's a good idea, it's something that helps you improve your income, maybe helps you become a better citizen, um, uh, is a wonderful personal development opportunity. But if what Elder Uchtdorf is saying is that it's a commandment, what do you think that means in, in our doctrine and in our faith? Maybe I'd just have you, uh, again, go back to the chat feature and uh, just share with me some ideas why it might be more than just a good idea, but as a commandment. What would make it there? And again, the uh, glory of God is intelligence, eternal progression. I like that. Um, vital for our spiritual growth. God wants us to progress and be happy. Our education helps us build the kingdom. Um, helps us have self-reliance, both temporally and spiritually. Um, knowledge comes with us into the next life. Uh, it can bless our families. Um, it helps us move forward. We take our knowledge with us. Um, it's good for our brains. Uh, we're supposed to progress and become like our Heavenly Father. Education feeds inspiration. Isn't that wonderful? In fact, we belong to one of the few religions where the more education people earn in our, in our church, the deeper their commitment to their faith and to the gospel. The restoration is the story of constant seeking and learning. These are wonderful wonderful messages so we can evaluate ourselves and not uh, be ruled over by those who have less than upstanding ideals. Um, these, these are just wonderful and instructive examples. Um, I want, you know, I want you to keep reflecting on that as we go throughout the evening. And um, 
you know, for us, uh, years ago, Elder uh, Detoc Christofferson talked about our faith as a, as a people who were committed to the family, and we're often known um, as a family-oriented church. And Elder Christofferson said, while the social science case for the family is compelling, our belief in the family goes much deeper, and it's tied fundamentally to our doctrine. I think similarly, while we are an education-oriented church, um, it, this is not just a happenstance of, circ of circumstance or a historical legacy of our ancestors, but this fundamentally grows out of our doctrine and who we are as a people. Now, I, I'd like to ask you another question. If education is so important, and it's more than just a good idea, it's fundamentally part of who we are uh, and what the Lord expects of us. What gets in the way of us pursuing our education? What constraints do you think in your lives or in the lives of others who uh, want to pursue an education? What keeps gets in the way? I see time, uh, fear, lack of funds, um, money, 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 finances, the inability to persist, distractions, lack of commitment, raising a family, life responsibilities, fear I can't do it, providing for a family. In fact, I often hear people say, I, well, look, I've missed the window um, and I can't stop now and go back. A age it came, comes up here, I'm too old. Um, I don't know if I can be successful. I don't know if I'll understand this. Uh, it's interesting, um, as we've asked this question all across the church, many of the responses you're giving uh, come back uh, in surveys and focus groups. And in fact, people believe this statement by Elder Uchtdorf. They believe it's inspired, but they just don't think it applies to them. And um, in fact, the number one uh, reason we hear that people feel like they can't pursue their education is it's too expensive. Number two is, I just can't make it work with my schedule. Um, I can't be on a campus every day of the week. Um, I can't uh, build my work around it. I certainly can't get to the, the campus uh, close to my home, let alone a church campus in Utah or Idaho. Um, although some of them say they would be happy to move to Hawaii if we would help them get there. Um, but that, that's the, the number two cause is I, I just can't make it work. I can't, logistically, it doesn't work with all the other constraints I have. The third most common answer, and this is the one we believe is the biggest driver, and many of you referenced it in your responses, but it's a fear, a lack of confidence, in fact, I've heard people say to me, well, I believe that statement and others from the brethren about the importance of education, but those are for other people who are more able to succeed in college, not for someone like me. I struggled in school early. Maybe I even started into college, but I, I'm just sh not sure I'm capable of doing it. And um, I want to talk to you about three of these. Later tonight, you're going to see here Brother Corden talk about how BYU Pathway was designed by the church specifically for the 55% of the U.S. church who doesn't have any college degree, associates or bachelors. Uh, we, have all, we have these huge campuses that are targeted to people going to college. But over half the church doesn't have a degree. And BYU Pathway was built to serve that population and deliberately to remove constraints to cost, uh, logistics, and to uh, confidence or fear. And you, you'll hear more about this tonight. But BYU Pathway is about half the price to most community colleges and, and helps in that regard on the cost side. It's online with only a once a week gathering, which lets people flex this around their schedule. 
And finally, the curriculum's designed to build confidence so students can succeed. I know all three of these things work because I've seen it in the lives of thousands of students. Let's go to the next slide and I'll just talk to you about three of our students who uh, have, maybe some of you have seen a little bit of them in your own lives or in the lives of people you're working with uh, in the church. I'll start first with Carolina Galvis. Carolina Galvis grew up in Massachusetts. Uh, her parents didn't go to college. None of her siblings had gone to college and she was quite poor. When she graduated high school, as actually a reasonably strong student, uh, she just started working. Uh, all of her friends went off to college. Most of them went west, at least those from the church went west to BYU or BYU-Idaho. And one day her bishop asked her, Carolina, why aren't you going to college? And she said, well, I just didn't think that was in the cards for me. And her good bishop asked her if she had heard about the BYU Pathway program, and she had not. She started into the program uh, and eventually earned her, her degree, graduated from the program, and now works for a federal judge in Massachusetts. But she just didn't know it was a possibility for her. And because of friends in the church, she was able to find access to an education that allowed her to keep working and was affordable and grew her spiritual confidence. Raul Hidalgo was uh, an adult uh, learner. He, he, he's shown here in a suit and tie, but when he started Pathway, he was working a part-time job. He thought he had missed his window for education. And the spirit prompted him that he should be doing something more, even though he was an older student. Uh, his job was really a uh, dead end. He was capable and responsible, but there was no upside, no opportunity for promotion. And where he was working, he would be stuck in the, at that income for the rest of his life. Spirit prompted him that he could do more and that there was more he, he could gain through education. He came to BYU Pathway. He earned a certificate, got a promotion and a job improvement. He earned another certificate and earned his associate's degree and then his bachelor's degree. He met his wife in BYU Pathway. Uh, later, he served as a Pathway missionary and then as a branch president. Uh, today, he's enrolled to become a judge in Mexico. And this is someone who, you know, at an older age thought, I'll never have this opportunity. But he acted on the uh, prompting he had and he was able to go back to college. Alyssa Peterson was a single mother who, uh, as she uh, found herself in, at mid midlife uh, at, with a four or five young children, she wanted to go back to school. She was accepted to the local campus where she lived, but she did not want to leave her children, or at least at the frequency that a campus schedule would require. She was attracted to the fact that she could do BYU Pathway with just a once a week gathering and then build the rest of the online courses around her schedule. She was also blessed because the program helped her build her confidence. It had been a number of years since she'd been in school. She knew she was capable, but it had been a long time. And BYU Pathway helped build her confidence. Maybe you can see a little bit of you or someone you're working with in the church. That looks like Carolina and Raul and Hidalgo. I promise you, as I would promise uh, so many members of the church, that if you will exercise your faith and follow those promptings, not only do you have a wonderful on-ramp to education, but you can ask for and receive heaven's help. Earlier today, I was on my fall devotional um, and uh, as I was uh, doing that, one of the themes that came out is uh, uh, this uh, scripture uh, in First Nephi, where uh, the Lord tells Nephi he would lead him across the great waters, but that Nephi would also know that it was by God's light and help and preparation uh, that he was led. 
Uh, that's one of the truly unique powers of our students is that they know their deeper purposes. They call on and seek for help from their Heavenly Father. And they have wonderful programs that help them realize their potential in the Lord. I'll just share this quote from President Nelson. It's on the next slide. He says, in the church, obtaining an education and getting knowledge are a religious responsibility. We educate our minds so that one day we can render service of worth to someone else. This is part of that higher and deeper purpose that students in BYU Pathway draw on. Now, uh, some of you may be saying, okay, I see it, I feel it, I realize it's important. But if you haven't noticed, President Gilbert, we're living in the middle of a pandemic. In fact, Arizona is in one of the you know, more difficult situations of many states across the country. How can I do this now? Uh, isn't this the, the craziest time to start to pursue my education? And just in closing, I, I will draw an experience of C.S. Lewis speaking to students in England who were preparing to go to college just on the eve of World War II. It was a fall of 1939. Hitler was on the march. And in Christ Church Chapel, C.S. Lewis gave this address. And I'd like to go to this last slide and just share what he had to say about learning in wartime. He says, I think it's important to try to see the present calamity in a true perspective. This war, and I would say this pandemic, creates absolutely no new situation. It simply aggravates the permanent human situation so that we can no longer ignore it. Human life has always been lived on the edge of precipice. We are mistaken when we compare war with normal life. Life has never been normal. Even those periods which we think most tranquil turn out on closer inspection to be, to be full of cries, alarms, difficulties, emergencies. Plausible reasons for putting off learning have never been lacking. I want you to know, and you can stop sharing that slide or come out of the presentation. I want you to know that Education is a miracle of this church. It is, like Elder Uchtdorf said, more than just a good idea, but a commandment. Students who come into BYU Pathway are able to draw on the deeper purposes of education. They're also taught to ask for heaven's help, which is your right. Even in this difficult time, if you felt promptings for you or someone you're working with, to encourage them to come back to school, I promise you that you can ask for and receive divine help and direction from our Heavenly Father. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, President. We want to now take a few minutes and watch a short video. Uh, this video will give you an overview of what BYU Pathway Worldwide is. And it'll throw a lot of information at you in a short period of time, but don't worry, we'll take a few minutes and uh, kind of debrief some of the key points from this video afterwards. But yes, let's go ahead and just take a, a few minutes now and I'll share my screen and we'll watch this video. For more than 140 years, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has offered educational opportunities to its members through its colleges and universities. Each year, these schools serve thousands of students and many people also attend universities in their local area. Yet there are still millions who don't pursue higher education because of high tuition costs, lack of time, self-doubt, or other obstacles. BYU Pathway Worldwide has a solution that removes these barriers, providing a way for people to access higher education from anywhere in the world and at a fraction of normal tuition costs. 
How does BYU Pathway Worldwide do this? By providing a path to earning a spiritually based university degree, completely online and at a reduced cost. There are two ways to start the Preparatory Pathway Connect program, or starting immediately into a degree program offered online from BYU-Idaho. And no matter which starting point you choose, both paths lead to the same outcome of high quality online certificates and degrees. Let's learn about each one. Pathway Connect is a reduced cost online program lasting one year that prepares students to start or finish a degree by building spiritual confidence and teaching foundational academic skills. Each term during Pathway Connect, students take a small course load of academic and religious education. The academic courses focus on life skills, professional skills, and university skills. Also, non-native English speakers can improve their English by participating in additional reading, writing, speaking, and listening activities. The religion courses teach spiritual doctrines from the Book of Mormon, the Bible, and modern prophets and apostles that deepen conversion and bring people closer to God and Jesus Christ. And because courses are online, students never need to come to a university campus, allowing them to study from home, fitting coursework around job schedules or other personal responsibilities. In addition to the academic and religion courses, students enrolled in Pathway Connect also gather once a week to support one another and participate in educational and leadership activities related to their courses. Depending on a student's location, gatherings are held at a church meeting house, an institute building, or virtually through online groups. Pathway Connect eases students into higher education by providing the best of both worlds. The flexibility of taking courses online combined with the benefits of regular face-to-face -face interaction with other students. And after completing Pathway Connect, students may apply their course credits toward a degree program offered online from BYU-Idaho. Whether a student first starts with Pathway Connect or jumps directly into their degree program, they can choose from approximately 30 online certificates that build into a focused set of online bachelor's degrees from BYU-Idaho. Online certificate and degree programs are available in the areas of business, technology, health, family studies, and professional studies. Here's how it works. Students start with a job ready certificate, which is typically made up of just five courses and can be completed in one year or less. And every course builds directly into an associate degree and a bachelor's degree. Students build a customized experience with three job ready certificates, an associate degree, and a bachelor's degree for the same cost and time it would have taken to get only a bachelor's degree. And while the spiritual impact remains constant throughout Pathway Connect as well as certificates and degrees, students see a significant boost in their earning potential after completing their first certificate and then again after completing a bachelor's degree. Whether you start with Pathway Connect or jump immediately into your online degree program, tuition costs significantly less than what you would pay somewhere else. And while tuition for both programs is low, the cost of starting with Pathway Connect is reduced even more. Depending on the country you live in, Pathway Connect tuition is 25 to 75% less than starting directly into a degree program. In summary, BYU Pathway Worldwide offers two paths to start earning a degree online. Starting with Pathway Connect might be best if you are worried about affording university tuition, have been away from school for a long time or haven't started yet, are seeking to develop foundational academic skills before fully beginning a degree program, or desire additional support from peers. Bypassing Pathway Connect and starting immediately on a BYU-Idaho online degree might be best if you have previously taken university courses, have experienced with online learning, are confident in your academic ability, or feel prepared to start immediately into your degree. But no matter which starting point you choose, remember that both paths lead to the same outcome of spiritually based, high quality certificates and degrees offered online from BYU-Idaho. I don't think that any other program that I would have been able to find would have the same type of impact on my life. Sometimes you think that you have had all the chances in the world and then you get this amazing blessing out of nowhere. So to me, it was just the biggest gift I could have ever gotten. It is the beginning of the rest of my life. It's the start of the rest of my journey towards who I want to become. It was just a miracle for me. It was a uh... An answer to my prayers. Pathway is a blessing. It really changed my life. BYU Pathway Worldwide brings an innovative approach to education. I encourage each person, regardless of age, to continue to learn 
pursue whatever path will, path will be most valuable to you and to your own family. You will be blessed as you do this. You will grow academically, professionally, and spiritually as you seek to enhance your education. So let me take just a few minutes and summarize some of those key points. As the video mentioned, BYU Pathway is made up of two programs. There's the Pathway Connect program and then the Certificates and Degrees program. So it starts with Pathway Connect, which then where students start with Pathway Connect, and then lead into skill-based certificates, which then build into an associate's degree and then a bachelor's degree. So let's talk about the Pathway Connect program first. This is our one-year program. Uh, it is at a reduced cost, and it's designed to do two main things, primarily to build spiritual confidence and then also to teach foundational academic skills. And so it's for people of all ages, uh, of all academic abilities, and of all educational backgrounds. Pathway Connect, this one-year program, is made up of three semesters of both academic and religious studies. So during the first semester, the academic classes are life skills, and then during the second semester, our students take the professional skills course, and then their third and final semester of Pathway Connect, they'll take the university skills course. Each of these semesters, of course, also has religion classes. And then on our third semester, students will also begin their first certificate, and they'll take their first certificate class. Then all these classes and courses, the credits do count towards future certificates and degrees. And we have starts available every September, uh, January and April. So students can start three times a year. And we also have an ESL version that's available for students. Now the other key, in addition to our academic courses, the other key is the gatherings. And these are weekly gatherings where students come together and they receive support from one another and these meetings are also facilitated by our church service missionaries, which is another layer of support. And these weekly gatherings can also be held virtually through online groups, which lately all of them have been held virtually. Now, what does it take to begin Pathway Connect? Well, the requirements are that you're a church member or you have a close connection to the church. Uh, you do need a computer and an internet because the courses are online. And you need to plan for 15 to 20 hours a week to budget time-wise for studies. Uh, you'll attend the weekly gatherings. Um, you do need finances to cover the tuition. Even though it's low cost, there is a tuition that you'll need to plan for. And you need to have intermediate to high English skills. Now, to me, what's most important is really what's not required. And this is where many of the barriers are taken away because we will have no standardized test scores that are required to apply. There's no high school diploma. As long as you're 19 years of age or older, there's no high school diploma that's required. And there's no worthiness in interview or ecclesiastical endorsement that's required for Pathway Connect. Now you will notice that there's an asterisk there uh, next to that one. And so after that first year, at that time, when you move into the uh, online degree and certificate program, at that point you will need an endorsement, but you do not need it for the first year of Pathway Connect. And then let's talk a little bit about the certificates and degree program. And this program is, is designed by building certificates that stack into each other so that credits are never lost. We like to call this no credit left behind. And really it starts with a certificate first. And these, the certificate is made up of five classes. Uh, the first class you actually begin during the Pathway Connect year. And then after that, you'll finish the other four classes and uh, that will give you your first certificate. After that first certificate, then you'll begin working on a second certificate. And at that time is when you'll start working on generals and uh, your elective courses. After you earn your associate's degree, you'll begin working on your third certificate in addition to general education courses. Now, the five program areas of study are business, technology, health, family studies, and professional studies. And so I want to show you just an example of what that might look like. This is a list of our 45 online certificates and degrees. So, for example, 
if a student was interested in getting a bachelor's degree in applied business management, they could customize that degree by taking certificates in business administration, uh, business and leadership skills, or computer programming, just for an example. This really does allow a student to customize their degree. And another example would be the professional studies degree. If that was my degree of choice, I could take certificates in computer-aided design and drafting or business and leadership skills and construction field supervision. It really allows a student to customize that. Now, let's talk a little bit about tuition. Uh, tuition costs significantly less than what you'd pay elsewhere. And while the tuition for both programs is low, the cost of starting with Pathway Connect is reduced even more, and it allows you to carry this low tuition rate all the way through to your bachelor's degree. And we do get a lot of questions about, uh, can I bring in previous credits? And so for our transfer students, previous college credits can be accepted, and that process of evaluating those credits occurs after your Pathway Connect year. And there's a website that has some great information about this. If you're in that situation where you have some previous credits that you would like to, to, to bring in to your degree, um, we'll type this in the chat field. So you've got this website as a reference, but uh, just know that that is uh, definitely a possibility and an option for you. Now I wanna share with you an experience of Ed. This is Ed, he's one of our students in the North America Southwest area. And these are his uh, church service missionaries that uh, led the weekly gatherings that Ed attended. And here's what Ed said uh, about the BYU Pathway Program. And after he completed the Pathway Connect Program, he said, this program has done more, more for me than just give me an opportunity to return to school. It has changed my life. I have grown closer to my savior. My self image has changed. I believe the Lord wanted me in Pathway, not only to be able to get an education and to provide better for my family, but I think he wanted me to know that I am somebody, that I do matter. And so this idea of, you know, providing better for your family, you know, that's why our students report, 92% of them report that they continue their education or they have improved their employment. And 96% refer a, a friend to Pathway Connect. But it's also Ed's statement there where he talks about growing closer to his savior. And 94% of our students do report an increased testimony of their savior. And that really is the, the power of the program is combining the spiritual with the academic, academic and temporal. So there's just a few important dates uh, for you to be aware of. Uh, first one is the priority deadline to apply for the fall semester is August 25th. Now, students can still apply up until the first day of class, which is on September 14th. But after that priority deadline, they'll be put on a standby list. But just know that uh, that deadline is the 25th and classes do start on the 14th. And for those that are interested in applying, they'll just go to our website, which is byupathway.org. And in the upper right corner, there's an apply now button. And that's also down in the lower left-hand corner is an apply now button. Simply click that uh, button and it will take you through a simple uh, five or 10 minute application process for most students where you'll answer a few questions. Uh, again, the whole design of the program is to remove as many barriers as possible and allow you to either start or finish your college education. So with that, we'd like to open it up uh, for a few minutes for some questions and uh, I'm going to stop sharing here and yeah. uh, turn it over to you, John, to moderate that for us. You bet. Thanks for the cordon. It's great to be with you, brothers and sisters. We're going to take a few minutes to take some of your questions. And if you want to type into the Q&A, not the chat for this one, so we can track them better and answer them offline if we need to, type into the Q&A any questions that you may have. And we do have a few that have come up already, President. I wanted to direct some of these to you if you wanted to help uh, these individuals. So one of the questions that came up is two thirds of the people on this call are actually leaders of the church. And so that's a large part of our population tonight. One question came up is how do I help, how do I best work with individuals to help them get excited and encouraged to sign up, especially for the people that have uh, the, the lack of confidence we talked about earlier. President, I think you're on mute. 
Thank you, John. And uh, what a great question. You know, the vast majority of our students either find out about the program from a friend or a leader at church, uh, someone from the Relief Society or someone from uh, the Elders Quorum or Bishopric. And uh, this is a really important role to, to have these conversations, uh, to help people know that they'll have the confidence. One of the things you can do is share with them the resources on the website. John, maybe we can post the link to that video out so uh, everybody has a copy of that. Um, the, other, the other thing you can do is remind them that BYU Pathway was built for people who have doubts. It's all about early wins and providing you the framework to succeed. You have support of a missionary couple, mentors, your peers, um, and so it's it's a wonderful uh, supportive environment. And the model of being certificate first also doesn't make you have to bite off 120 credits all at once. <laughs> but you get in and have an early win, improve your earning capacity, and improve your job opportunities uh, before you continue on with your degree. So. Those are just some quick thoughts, and uh, you, can have, you can also tap into your stake welfare and self-reliance uh, resources, and you can uh, work with the pathway missionaries in your area. Thanks, President Gilbert. Another question, questions, and I'm trying to synthesize into one. Um, students are asking what kind of either scholarship or payment options are available for the tuition for those who are in a tight Great. You know, the, the first thing is just that we try to price it uh, at a more affordable rate. Uh, there are uh, several scholarships available. Uh, we have a return missionary scholarship. We also have uh, this fall launching a, a scholarship called the Heber J. Grant Needs Scholarship, which helps people who have uh, extra needs. Um, and we, we have found both of those can be very helpful for people who are looking for extra aid. The, the main thing though is uh, we've started from the ground up. You know, a lot of universities say they want affordable education. They just want someone else to pay for it. Um, the, you know, at the church, we have both the church, the tithe payers and the student pay for this. And it's important we found a model that was affordable both to the church and to the students. And, that's why we can price it. It's you know less than seventy five dollars a credit hour um, because uh, we don't have a big huge campus. We don't have a big research infrastructure. We don't have college athletics. Everything in BYU Pathway is meant to be high quality and affordable to the student. Thank you, President Gilbert. Uh, another question we have. We'll go until ten till with the questions, so we have enough time for concluding speakers. Uh, we, uh, a general question that has been coming up as well uh, is I have, the students have written that they have a mental illness of some kind, whether a learning disability or bipolar disorder. What kind of resources are available to, for students who struggle with these types of challenges? Uh, yes, we have inside of BYU Pathway uh, a mentoring group and when students apply, uh, we have them do a uh, uh, background survey that lets us understand some of the challenges they'll have. The mentors are trained to help with some of those problems specifically. There's also a tutor, free tutoring throughout the program. All students have access to this um, without charge. Uh, and then the missionary couples in each gathering group are also a resource to help you through those challenges. And many of our students face anxiety and depression and other challenges um, and they find that the supportive and really safe environment of BYU Pathway makes it much more approachable for them. Thank you, President. Uh, another question that seems to be coming up often in the Q&A is about transfer credits. Um, when it comes to people who have around an associate degree, are they required to bypass Pathway Connect? Can they do the Pathway Connect still? Those are some of the questions coming right. up. Uh, you, you are allowed to bypass Pathway Connect if you feel you're ready. Some of our associate's degree 
uh, students uh, who've been away from school for a while want the life skills, study skills, and professional skills training that you get in Pathway Connect. And all those credits count to your bachelor's degree. And so many find that a good place to start even if they have an associate's degree. But if you have an associate's degree and you're just looking to quickly upskill because you had lost a job or you're facing challenges in the pandemic, you can go right into earning a certificate uh, right out of the gate. Thank you, President Gilbert. We'll conclude this question here. And brothers and sisters, uh, we're gonna work our best to address your questions offline for the many of you we didn't get to specifically. Uh, do I need to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to participate in BYU Pathway Worldwide? Thank you for that question. Uh, no, you do not. And we've been encouraging friends of the church to participate in the program for several years now. Um, this has been a wonderful thing for them and for members of the church. The program is fundamentally spiritual in nature. In fact, uh, our, our completion rate uh, for BYU Pathway students is quite a bit higher than our risk profile, two to three times higher than the national average. And a lot of people look at our curriculum, they look at our mentoring program, but really one of the more fundamental reasons is that we teach students their divine potential and we integrate the gospel with their learning. And um, so we, we encourage non-members to participate you do need to have some tie to the church and to understand that it's a spiritual program. So a part member family, um, uh, a friend who's taking it with you, meeting with the missionaries. Uh, and if you don't have those things, but you're connected with the church, the, the local pathway missionaries will help you determine if this is a good fit. Um, and we don't try to market to just anyone off the street, but uh, this is a great program for non-members and for less actives for that matter. Uh, people who aren't active in the church find Pathway as a wonderful bridge back to the church itself. John, let me, let me just wrap up this session and thank you for your questions. As uh, uh, Brother Wilson said, we'll try to get responses back to you offline for some of the more specific questions. I just close uh, with my commitment uh, to you that uh, this is a unique time in the history of church education. Elder Holland called it a monumental moment in the history of church education. Uh, the BYU Pathway Program is rolling out all across the church in ways we really couldn't have ma imagined just a decade earlier. Um, if you or someone you're working with uh, has felt feelings about uh, the power of an education and a BYU pathway tonight, I promise you that the Lord is mindful of you and he will give you the help and support and resources you need. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, President Gilbert. We very much appreciate your um, message this evening as well as Michael and and John for your help with that. We are going to turn our attention to our another speaker for some concluding remarks, Elder John Smith. John is a an area 70 of the in the North America Southwest area. John is a former uh, served formerly as a bishop and a stake president in Texas and then served as a mission president in the California um, San Diego Mission. Professionally, John is trained as an attorney. He um, currently serves as the Assistant Vice President of Education Outreach and Student Services at ASU, and so very much has a good handle on education and what we're trying to accomplish through Pathway. Um, John lives in Gilbert with his wife and four children. And we're gonna turn the time now to John for his remarks. Following Elder Schmidt's remarks, we're going to have a benediction and we'll conclude this meeting. And that will be offered by Rex Condi at the conclusion of Elder Schmidt's remarks. So um, we'll turn the time over to um, Elder John Schmidt. Thank you, Elder Lithgow. And appreciate your, uh, your leadership and your friendship. And President Gilbert, thank you. 
Uh, if only we could get you back here in Phoenix where it's only about 115 this time of year instead of just uh, Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. But uh, thank you for being here virtually tonight. We, uh, we love you and we sustain you. And my dear brothers and sisters, uh, just first and foremost, I want you to know just how much I love you and how much I have felt personally tonight how much the Lord loves you. Uh, you, heard, you heard President Gilbert, who is also Elder Gilbert, use the word promise on several occasions. And one of those was in knowing who you are, uh, that the Lord would help you, that he would open doors for you. And I just uh, bear a second witness that that is absolutely true. And, uh, and invite the Holy Ghost to be with me and with you. And I'm grateful, as we saw, that we've got literally people from every corner of the state, including Sholo, which has the, uh, the name of my favorite road, uh, the Deuce of Clubs, as its main drive. And, uh, and including my parents, by the way, who are watching from Prescott tonight, just to, uh, to make sure that I don't mess up the family honor. Uh, it's wonderful to, uh, to be with all of you. If I can, I'd like to share my screen uh, with you for just uh, just a few just a few minutes. And if I can, we'll share just a few uh, a few of these slides. Annette, you asked a question, well, why is ASU here? It's because ASU does have a partnership with BYU Pathway. Uh, through its online programs with BYU-Idaho. Now, interestingly, brothers and sisters, it was just a year and a half ago that you and I, many of us, were among the 70,000 in Cardinal Stadium in Glendale listening to President Russell M. Nelson. Um, and yet, today, this is how we meet. Uh, this was actually the inaugural meeting of the 11th Quorum of the 70. If you look down on your bottom right-hand screen, you'll see that Elder Quentin L. Cook of the Quorum of the 12 was speaking to us. But whether we're gathered together in large groups in the stadium or whether we're gathered as we are virtually here tonight, the gospel's the same and the spirit's the same. And, uh, and I'm so grateful for the technology that brings all of us here together. In talking about Arizona State University uh, is... My wife and I finished our, our service as mission president in, uh, in San Diego. This is the reason I came to work at ASU. Um, ASU's charter, I felt, mirrors exactly what it is that a public university should do. And this charter says simply that ASU is a comprehensive public research university measured not by whom it excludes, but by whom it includes and how they succeed advancing research and discovery of public value and assuming fundamental responsibility for the economic, social, cultural, and overall health of the communities it serves. And, uh, and that is meaningful to me. You know, we live in a world where sometimes people think that if you're going to open the doors of access to higher education, allow as many people as possible to receive higher education, that somehow you sacrifice excellence. And that's simply not true, it's a myth. At ASU and with BYU Pathway, we're determined to show that you can have both access and excellence combined together. And uh, ASU's president, Dr. Michael M. Crow, now notice this photo that I uh, put on this slide is from when he gave a devotional with President Gilbert at BYU-Idaho. But ASU's culture is focused on this, on focusing on the success of students and the success of the community and everything that we do. All of our resources are focused to that end to help students succeed and to make sure that our communities succeed as well. Now, in case you hadn't noticed, this isn't your parents' ASU or your grandparents' ASU. Uh, whereas previously ASU may have had this reputation of being a party school, now the reputation of the university is one of innovation. It's recognized throughout not just the country, but the world as the leading institution for higher education, for innovation in this country. Uh, ahead of Stanford, ahead of MIT, but, but most importantly, again, and we've seen this with the pandemic, that ASU has the ability to be able to pivot, to be able to adapt, and to be able to overcome in unique and innovative ways, and that's important to us. Um, it's important that you know that ASU is, is accessible. I love this slide. It's actually the income level broken into $20,000 increments of our freshman class last year. And if you notice, the largest number of our students came from families who made between 20 and $40,000 a year. The second largest number came from families who made $20,000 or less. 
In fact, 40% of ASU's graduates last year graduated with zero debt and we're determined to make sure that our students not only enter, but that they complete with a low debt load as well. Um, for that reason, we have over 25,000 first generation college students, again, opening access and opening opportunity for these individuals. And uh, another slide that I enjoy is that at ASU, our student population now actually mirrors the diversity that exists here in the state of Arizona. Um, President Gilbert and, uh, and actually in Brother Corden's presentation referred to this, but as I share some data with you, don't get caught up in the numbers. Remember that to the Lord, he's never given us simply a temporal commandment, but all things are spiritual to him. And as we talk about self-reliance, and as we talk about self or temporal self-reliance, it is innately spiritual. But the reality is in this country, there are 36 million adults who have some college, but no degree. Uh, that number in Arizona is anyway, in one study that I saw is 1.1 million adults who have some college, but no degree. The average income for those individuals, uh, you'll see it is just, uh, just under 34,000. Uh, as people receive a bachelor's degree or further education, that number increases dramatically. Um, one slide, and this is Arizona specific, but I think this uh, is something that we have taken note of, especially during the pandemic. Those uh, boxes that you see in red are those that are most likely to be automated. Those jobs that are most likely to be automated. So in the, the far left-hand corner of your screen, you see jobs related to retail sales, jobs related to cashiers, and uh, combined food preparation. Um, the reality, and I don't know that we would have thought of this a few years ago, if you go to McDonald's now, especially during the pandemic, you have contactless ordering. My 16-year-old daughter works at McDonald's, so I know this. Um, but, uh, but the reality, those are the kinds of jobs that without formal education will be increasingly automated. And if you look at those jobs that require a college degree, they are much more green, meaning they are safer from being automated now and in the future. Um, Yesterday, I received this graphic from the Wall Street Journal from President Crow. Um, I don't know that I need to share too much uh, with you other than to say that uh, that which is on the top uh, says that workers with at least a bachelor's degree saw a smaller employment contraction and have largely rebounded uh, even after the COVID-19 pandemic at the very bottom uh, where you see those who have been deeply impacted by the pandemic. Uh, it reads that in contrast to college educated workers, those without a high school diploma have suffered some of the worst job losses and have seen little recovery so far. Um, one thing that's curious to think about since today, at least for my youngest children, was the first day of school, but 65% of kids were entering kindergarten will ultimately end up working in a job that does not even exist today. And so what we're talking about is how can we develop learners, not just now, but throughout their lives, both at BYU Pathway and at ASU, we have to design a model that is capable of serving all learners at all ages, at all stages of work and learning from every single socioeconomic background to help them through every time and season of their life. And it, Traditionally, this is what we've done. We've gone into kindergarten, into elementary school, into junior high school, high school, and then either into a career or into a technical school and then a career or into a community college or a university and then a career. But that increasingly is changing. And uh, if we think about what it means to be a universal learner, it means that, that increasingly high school students, whether through your community colleges, will be able to take dual enrollment classes they'll be able to take concurrent enrollment classes through the university. And that as people need to be able to adapt and develop learning and skills over the course of their lifetime, they can increasingly do this to provide for themselves and their families and to make sure that they're personally fulfilled as well. Um, to do that, we need partnerships. We need to utilize technology. We need to create new pathways. We need to reimagine these delivery models. And this essence of partnership is, uh, is really what I want to talk to you about tonight. When I was in the MTC with my wife in, uh, in June of 2014, 
President Nelson said to us that we're seated there, he said, the magic of true partnership is this, more can be accomplished by partners than could be done by either acting alone with true partners, one plus one is more than two. And goodness, we see that in families where you have a husband and wife who come together sealed in the temple and the impact of that partnership is eternal in nature. It literally has no end. And so for that reason, we're so pleased that uh, at Arizona State University that we have a partnership with BYU Pathway. As uh, Brother Corden showed you earlier, at BYU Pathway, there are 33 certificate programs, there are six associate degree programs, and there are five bachelor's degree programs um, at ASU. And this was just of last week, but this year, this fall, we'll have well over 50,000 fully online learners we have 128 certificate programs on our, on, for our on-campus students. We have 430 bachelor's degree programs and 117 fully online bachelor's degree programs through ASU Online. And Brother Wilson, if you don't mind just typing in that web address for asu.edu slash degrees. Um, here's the reality, brothers and sisters, if somebody wants to be able to, to economically and efficiently take as many credits through BYU Pathway as possible, but wants to go into a degree program. I saw one of the questions asked about nursing or any other host of programs, but they're not offered by BYU Pathway. What this allows is for a student to be able to transfer into ASU, to be able to transfer those credits in as efficiently as possible and pursue your degree at Arizona State University. There are two ways that uh, that you're able to do this the first one is my path to asu we call that as well the guaranteed program for admission and uh, what that will allow you to do is to be guaranteed admission to transfer between 24 to 60 byu idaho pathway credits toward an asu degree and again we want you to be able to maximize all of those low cost credits that you can and then seamlessly working with an admissions officer at asu seamlessly transfer those toward a degree at asu the other option is through the associate's degrees that you saw mentioned. There are several of those at BYU Pathway, three of them that are applied associate of science degrees. In that case, we don't even look, uh, ASU doesn't even look at those 60 credits. We don't analyze them. We just take that degree wholeheartedly and you're able to apply it toward a wide variety of Bachelor of Applied Science degree programs at ASU. And so those really are the two ways and to be able to find information about that. Um, well, first off, we talked about tuition earlier. Brother Wilson, if you just want to type this in, um, the base resident tuition, again, not accounting for financial aid or other means, is $10,710 per year for Arizona residents at ASU. But where I would turn you, brothers and sisters, is to lds.asu.edu. So there's no www, just lds.asu.edu. And there you can find the link to the BYU Pathway Partnership Program. There you can watch President Crow's devotional address, and you can see some of the other things that are happening with Latter-day Saint students, whether it's the institutes and other things, the Pioneer Heritage Scholarship, a scholarship that we've designated for Latter-day Saint students at the university, which you can find all of that again at lds.asu.edu. And Brother Wilson, if you could type that in as well, I'd greatly appreciate it. Now you see there at the bottom left-hand corner, a picture of Elder Gong. We were grateful to have Elder and Sister Gong here on campus in March of last year. And uh, after they met with this group of students, they met with students and families that evening at ASU Gamage. And in his closing remarks, uh, Elder Gong said, well, if there's one place in the world where saints can be devils and devils can be saints, it's here. And, uh, and we feel that way about, uh, about Arizona State University, whether you're an adult learner and you're fully online or whether you're on campus having one of those experiences, whether at the Polytechnic campus in Tempe downtown and the West campus or at our centers throughout the state of Arizona, uh, this is one place where saints can be devils and devils can be saints. Now, I'd like to change the tenor and the tone of my closing remarks and testimony, brothers and sisters. Um, if you have questions, then Brother Wilson, if you could please put this in the chat. There's my email address. Feel free to email me with any questions you have. We won't have time to take them tonight, but I'll gladly respond. And 
I don't know much, so I'll find somebody who knows the answer to your questions in the event that I don't know. But G. Homer Durham, who served in the presidency of the 70, he uh, was also the 11th president of Arizona State University from 1960 to 1969. But he said that it's a paradox that men will gladly devote time every day for many years to learn a science or an art, yet will expect to win a knowledge of the gospel, which comprehends all sciences and arts through perfunctory glances at books or occasional listening to sermons. The gospel should be studied, should be studied more intensely than any school or college subject. With that said, brothers and sisters, can I just remind you whose gospel it is that we should study. Uh, above all else, I am a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he lives and that he knows you and that he loves you. Um, indeed, he is the path. He is the pathway, as he said to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Indeed, brothers and sisters, if our path does not lead to the Lord Jesus Christ, we're on the wrong path. And we can make changes in our lives to head his direction. Um, BYU Pathway is not organized and not instituted simply to be a pathway to certificates, degrees, better jobs, and increased pay. It is a pathway to the Lord Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, not only does he live, but he speaks. And he speaks to living prophets and apostles today. In last general conference, President Nelson reminded us that our Father knows that when we're surrounded by uncertainty and fear, what will help us the very most is to hear his Son. Because when we seek to hear, truly hear his Son, we will be guided to know what to do in any circumstance. And that is what we want for all of God's children, for every single one of you, for every member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, indeed for all of God's children here in the state of Arizona. If I were a state president today, I would be very intentional, very purposeful about ensuring that every young single adult was invited to participate in BYU Pathway. Because that pathway and Pathway Connect will connect them to their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If I were a bishop or Relief Society president, Elders Quorum president today, I would be very intentional and I would be very purposeful and make it a focal point of my ministering efforts to make sure that I invited every less active member, every underemployed member of my flock to participate in BYU Pathway because Pathway Connect will connect them to their Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I know that he lives. I bear witness of him. I ask heaven's choicest blessings to be upon you, especially during these uncertain times, and express my love and my gratitude for your goodness, for your faith, for your dedication and your consecration, and leave you my witness and love in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Schmidt. Um, Elder Condi. Can you hear me now, uh, Elder Condi? You should have access to uh, to speak. If you can hear us, go ahead and... Can you hear me? Yes, I sure can. Thank you for giving our closing prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we're grateful this evening to be able to attend this webinar in our homes. We're thankful for the spirit that is attended here. We're grateful for the knowledge that we have benefited from here today. We pray that all those who can take advantage, uh, who would be advantaged by being members of the Pathway Connect system, that they might hear of this program and, and desire to uh, take advantage of this opportunity. We ask those that or possibly students, that they might consider their options. And if Pathway would work for them, 
that they might look further into this and decide if this would work for them. We are grateful for the blessings that we have. We're thankful for the church that provides this program. And we say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, everyone. It's been great to be with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Can